real introduction. This is Darren Butler, master gardener, guru. He's also a permaculturist, he teaches, he is an amazing guy, and I reached out through the UC Davis Master Gardener program, the UC Davis Common Ground Garden Program, and they really, they volunteer for projects like ours, and they've served urban farming with a lot, a lot of master gardeners. So I reached out to their network and asked if anybody would want to volunteer, because this is a big undertaking of how to understand this and how to do it. Although it's basic gardening, there's still certain considerations unique, I think, to this. So um, Darren responded right away, and we met, and through a lot of conversations and a lot of touring of locations, um, Darren was, was very, very thorough, and we'd say, please, can we grow it at this wall? And Darren would say, no, because you're only going to get two hours of sunlight. <laughs> so, you know, um, it was like, but what about, no, because in winter you only get one and a half hours of sunlight. So we went through so many different, I don't even know how many locations we went through. That would have been great physically, we thought, and also socially. And as I said before, we came to these, and these are the perfect places and the perfect locations, socially and physically. And so when Darren sees a south-facing wall such as this, <laughs> his eyes just light up. <laughs> so, um, and we have his blessing, but I just really wanted to introduce you to Darren, and, and, and I'll let him talk from his perspective about this project and the process. So thank you, Darren. Thank you, Joyce. Thank you. Thank you. Darren. term would be horticultural realist. We used some other terms through the process. Um, but I think I, I nixed probably 15 walls. In Southern California, we have a very unique situation in that we can grow year-round. So we can get three to six crops uh, of most plants. And uh, in, the, in the winter, the sun drops lower in the sky. Actually, it doesn't drop. The earth is shifting, but it appears to drop. So a wall that might look great this time of year, get plenty of light. The light might go away later in the year. We have uh, very hot, dry, difficult summers. And then the rest of the year is cooler and rainy. So selecting species was key on this project. Generally the plants where you're eating the fruit uh, do better in warm weather. Where you're eating part of the plant, like lettuce or chives or something like that, they do better in cooler weather. So what you'll see is tomatillos, uh, tomatoes, cucumbers, where we're eating, we're eating the vegetables. A um, few other things I wanted to touch on. We've talked a lot about how important it is to grow edibles, and I totally agree with that, but it's just the beginning. Whenever you grow an edible garden with a community, you're growing a lot of other things. Um, the soil will work with you and cultivate you as you cultivate the soil. You're cultivating community. You're learning skills. You're transforming sunlight into a, a myriad, wonderful variety of food. Um, it, it's, it's really for me, a spiritual process. Okay? Not necessarily religious, Spir spiritual is something personal. Um, so this, the chance to work with the soil, and I teach that we are soil in temporary human format. Um, so we really are part of this wall. Uh, there, are there are molecules in each of us that were in dinosaurs, or that were was in one of the founding fathers of our country, or that was in the hair of a giant sloth. Um, the same molecules have been recycling through life for time that we can't even imagine. So by working with the soil, we're touching infinity. Um, we're touching the future, we're touching the past. We're touching past generations of all species that have died and decayed and returned to soil, and then with sunlight, been reborn as new forms of life. So it's really an amazing, amazing opportunity to work with soil. We don't respect it enough in our culture. Um, and this, I, I promise people, and I've never been disappointed or never been challenged, if you really dedicate yourself to a garden and to soil, you will have results that are unexpected and wonderful. Um, I'm really glad to have been part of the project, even though I was, I think, the killjoy most of the time. <laughs> no, you can't put it there. No, we can't grow that this time of year. Um, we, we really focused on growing food that you could pick and eat fresh, didn't, didn't need a lot of cooking. And uh, some of the things I did to, to consult for the project might have seemed complicated, but from my perspective, they were pretty simple. When you, when you say it has to be eaten fresh, and has to be able to do good, do well in 100 degree weather, that pretty much limits it to about 15 things. So that's what I recommended. Um, 
I think that's all I have. Does anybody want have any questions on the on the plant material or anything like that? I have a question. Sure. Will the plants um, or the vegetables change as you go through the year? Yes. Um, the, many of these actually need warm weather to mature properly. Peppers, the plants in the tomato family. Um, many of them are annuals, which means they grow for one season and put out their fruit and then die. So they need to be replanted. So yes, the, wall, uh, the, the species in the wall will shift throughout the year. We have what we might call a bare spot here, but that's actually an opportunity. And yeah, that's the best way to look at that. Um, to maximize our harvest, we want to we want to work through time as well as space, so that when some when a space opens up on a wall, it's a great new opportunity to put in something else. The different species will harvest out at different times, um, so you this is probably more like what the wall is going to realistically look like. Maybe have some little teeny baby plants growing. Um, over time, it'll be you won't have quite the same blast of everything being mature. Um, it'll shift throughout the throughout the seasons. Um, one other thing I wanted to mention, as I was uh, at the Weingart Center, I noticed there were dozens of bees. I don't know if anybody else saw that. But uh, what we're doing is bringing ecosystems, or at least parts of ecosystems, back into the city. That's something I wondered. How long would it take bees to find these walls in the middle of Los Angeles? <laughs> one of the most polluted air, the most difficult conditions for any living creature, human or, or bee or otherwise. Uh, it didn't take them long. Uh, and other species will follow. Maybe we'll get a bird at some point.